Hello everyone and welcome to English Like a Native with me, Anna English. I hope that you are all well and ready to start this British English slang lesson. That's right, today we are covering slang words, specifically slang words and phrases beginning with the letter U. There's quite a few um, very common words that we're going to include today and um, but the lesson is going to be quite short. So, oh gosh, I'm pinging everywhere. I'm sorry, I'm turning everything onto silent. <laughs> I wasn't fully prepared. Um, I do hope you are all well. I know I haven't seen you for a few days, but I hope you've been enjoying the videos that I have been putting out for you. Particularly the ones I put out in the last couple of days and the one I put out this morning, which I spent three days preparing and editing. So I do hope that you make the most of that lesson, which gives you some hints and tips as to what I think are the best ways to learn a language. And I go through what I'm doing to learn Spanish, but those are ways that you can use when you're learning English. So if you haven't seen that already, then do take some time after this lesson to go and check out that video, the best ways to learn a language. I'm going to say a very quick hello to my patrons. Hi patrons, how are you? Um, Ewa and Eric are both in saying hi straight away, hello, and also I'm seeing everyone saying hello in the chat room on YouTube, hello. So let's get started with the very first slang term on our list. Now this particular slang term, or slang word rather, is used a lot, and you might not have heard it, but it is the word umpteen, umpteen times. Um, so I'm going to write times in there because we normally say umpteen times rather than umpteen on its own. Umpteen means countless or many. There were a lot of them. So if I said I have heard this song umpteen times, I'm saying I've heard this song many times. And if I say I've had to wash the dishes umpteen times, then I'm saying I've had to do the washing up <laughs> a lot of times and I'm obviously very upset about it. So um, the example sentence I've given here is, I have asked you umpteen times to tidy your room, but you never listen. I used to hear that from my mum quite a lot. I've asked you umpteen times to tidy your room, but you never listen. So do try and remember that phrase, that word. It's quite a good one. Umpteen, umpteen times. The next one is one that you guys say to me all the time and it's the phrase under the weather. I think you really like this one. Under the weather means that you're sick or unwell and being under the weather generally means that you're mildly ill, that you're not very ill. If someone is very ill, like very, very sick, maybe they've gone to hospital because they're so ill, you wouldn't use the phrase under the weather because that's not... It's not um, heavy enough. If you're really ill, then you'd say they're very poorly or they're very sick or they're very unwell. <laughs> but um, under the weather, we, use to, we tend to use when we're ill with a cold or a fever or we're just feeling generally a bit rubbish. You're under the weather. You're feeling under the weather. And so the example sentence I've given here is, Daniel won't be coming into school today. He is a little bit under the weather. He is a little bit under the weather. I hope you can all hear me all right. I can't seem to get this microphone to stay close to my mouth today. It's not playing, it's not playing ball. Um, DJ Aveld has said, I'm watching Anna English videos umpteen times. Excellent DJ Avel. That's wonderful to hear. I hope that you're finding them helpful as well. Now, just before I go on to the next phrase, which is another really important one, I'm going to just quickly mention my children's channel, Bella and Beans TV. Some of you may have already heard of it. Some of you may not have heard of it, but I've noticed recently the viewings are going down. So I just want to make sure that everyone here is aware of it. And if you know anyone with little children who might be interested, then I would love if you could share it. The link for it is in the description box below. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to give you a few moments of the recent video we did, which is a Halloween video. And um, yeah, I'm just going to... Look at all these decorations. Beans have been busy. 
let me give them a call. Oh, Beans! Oh, hi, Bella. Hello, Jigglers, how are you? Beans, you have done a fantastic job of oh. decorating the front <gasps> room. Oh, wow! <gasps> this is so amazing! <gasps> Look at the green spider's web. Oh, it's so spooky. <laughs> So I'm not going to um, I'm not going to um, trouble you with too much of that. But if you do think that your children or anyone you know would find that interesting, then I would really, really appreciate if you could share it around and help me to improve the viewings. That would be wonderful. We put so much time and effort into these videos. It's such a shame when they don't get many views. All right. So what is the next term on our list? So the next slang term is the term under wraps. If something is under wraps, it means it's being kept secret. I'm not telling you about it. I'm keeping it wrapped up, a secret. So if I asked you to keep something under wraps, I'm asking you to keep it a secret. Don't tell anyone. Keep it under wraps. And the example sentence I've given here is, I'm going to do an extra special video when we hit 100,000 subscribers. I will tell you about it, but I want you to keep it under wraps for now. I will tell you about it, but I want you to keep it under wraps for now. So I want you to keep it a secret, okay? <laughs> and it's true, guys. In um, about a month, I imagine, we're likely to hit around 100,000 subscribers. And I will do an extra special video for that moment because you guys have been so amazing up until now that I want to give you something in return. So I'll do an extra special video when we hit that point, um, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's a secret. I'm keeping it under wraps. Okay, so the next one is a really fun term and something you should definitely be aware of, and it's the term undies. Undies. Anybody know what that means? Undies is just an easy, short way of saying underpants. Undies can be used for girls or boys. Um, if you are in your undies, then you're in your underwear. <laughs> hopefully you're not in your undies now, but hopefully you are wearing undies. But clothes as well, other clothes as well. <laughs> okay, so the example sentence I've given for undies is, if you ever feel nervous about giving a speech, then just imagine the whole room in their undies. Just imagine the whole room in their undies. Now here, I've used the term the whole room, meaning everybody in the room. And we do do that a lot. So I've said, just imagine the whole room in their undies. And I mean, just imagine every single person in the room is wearing their underwear. And that will make you feel more confident. Okay? So one of you has mentioned the word panties. Panties is, has a slightly different feel to undies. Panties feels a little bit more um, sexually suggestive or a bit naughty. Your panties. So it's the word undies is a little bit more throwaway. It's definitely not very sexual at all. Um, it's a safer term and similar to pants as well, I guess. So you're in your pants, you're in your undies. So I would say to a child, for example, if my ch if my little child came running in, in their underwear, I'd say, why are you standing there in your undies? Go and put some clothes on. Um, or I might say, why are you stood there in your pants? You need to get your school uniform on. But I wouldn't say to them, why are you standing there in your panties? It just doesn't, for me, it, other natives might feel differently, but for me, that word just feels a little bit, a little bit more grown up, a little bit more adult. Okay, so undies, very safe term, slang term for underwear. So the next one on the list is the word uni. This is very simply a shortened version of the word university and we use it all the time. Most people when talking about university will say uni. I'm going to uni, I got into uni, I'm applying for uni. For uni. I have uni friends, I have lots of uni parties, uni, uni, uni. It's what we use most of the time instead of university. And the example sentence I've given here is, I'm having a blast at uni and my uni mates are the best. I'm having a blast at uni and my uni mates are the best. Okay, so if you can't remember what the phrase having a blast means, 
then you need to go back to the slang lesson with words beginning with B and you'll find that um, is on that list to have a blast. Okay, so um, patrons, are you all well? Yes, fine. Lots of people chatting here in the chat room. I am glancing over your comments. I'm not ignoring you. I just want to get through this list as quickly as I can and then I can answer some of your questions. One of you has just said, can I use slang terms at work? You can, but some of them you have to be very careful with. So, So a lot of slang terms are inappropriate informal situations if they're insulting perhaps and we'll come on to an insulting one in a moment um so i'd be i would be very careful I, i'd have to know that the slang terms i'm using are safe and also i would be careful if i was talking to my boss perhaps if someone is a higher status to you in work I wouldn't use slang terms but if it's just your colleagues who you talk with every day and you have a good rapport with them and a good relationship and you feel like you can relax with them a little bit, then yes, I would use slang with them, but not so much with the boss, okay? So the next is the term to come unstuck. So if you come unstuck, it means that things haven't kind of worked out as you've planned. It's like you failed at something, you've come unstuck. Things have gone in a different direction than what you had hoped and you've gotten yourself into a sticky situation. So the example sentence I've given here to give you an idea of this phrase is, I had planned to summit the mountain by the end of the day. To summit something is to reach the top of, so to get on top of something. So I had planned to reach the top of the mountain by the end of the day, but I came unstuck. Things didn't go to plan when it started snowing, as I hadn't packed my ice axe and crampons. So an ice axe and crampons is something that you, is equipment that you would need to climb mountains in the snowy conditions. So I haven't got those items with me and it started to snow, which means I won't be able to climb to the top of the mountain by the end of the day. I have come unstuck. I hope that makes sense. So one more time, I had planned to summit the mountain by the end of the day, but I came unstuck when it started snowing, as I hadn't packed my ice axe and crampons. Okay, so let me know if that doesn't make sense and I'll see if I can try and find a better way to explain it. Otherwise, let's move on. The next phrase using the word up is up against it. So it's a phrase, there's quite a lot of phrases that use up. And if you're up against it, that means you're facing a lot of difficult challenges. So you're being challenged in life, life is difficult, you are up against it. Perhaps if you are trying to meet a deadline and everything that could go wrong is going wrong, the computer stops working, you didn't get the email that you needed to complete the work and time. Um, Maybe they've shortened the deadline and given you less time. So they've brought the deadline forward. So you've got even less time and everything's going wrong. You could say, look, I'm up against it. I need to get this project finished for the deadline. Okay, so when you're up against it, it means you're having a difficult time. There's lots of challenges in your way. And again, I've used the example of the mountain And I said, summiting the mountain was much harder than we had anticipated. With the bad weather, ill health and failing equipment, we were really up against it. We were really up against it. Okay. So, um, the next one is something that's been used a lot in recent years and it's the word upcycle. Upcycle. So to upcycle something is to reuse it. It's a similar word to recycle, but it's got a slightly different meaning. If you recycle something, it's it's taking something that's rubbish and giving it to someone who can make it into something useful. So you recycle it, you send it to the recycling center, you deal with your waste in an appropriate manner. If you upcycle something, it means that you recycle something in a way that you can use it yourself. So for example, if I, if I had, um, 
<laughs> I can't think of an example. If my box, if my box was falling apart and I was about to throw it away, my my friend might say, I'll have that. And they might fix it and they might decorate it and they might turn it into a shoebox. In that case, they have upcycled it. They've made it into something else. They've decorated it and made it usable again. So to upcycle something, people tend to upcycle furniture a lot. So if your if your um, if your drawers are old and falling apart, and you're going to throw them away, you're going to put them in the skip. Then someone might come along, and they might paint them, put new handles on them, and give them a nice a nice new lease of life, and then sell it on to somebody else, or they might use it themselves. It has been upcycled. Does that make sense? I hope so. Have you ever upcycled anything? I have a few times, but I'm not very good at upcycling. <laughs> they tend to look like a dog's dinner, basically. Um, if you don't know what dog's dinner means, then we covered that in the slang lesson with words beginning with D. So do go and have a look at that. Um, all right. So the example sentence I've given here is, I am glad you like my cabinet. We upcycled it last week found it in a skip and decided it would look lovely with a little TLC. Can you remember what TLC means? TLC means tender loving care, with a little tender loving care. Okay. Great. All right. So we're very close to the end. We've only got a few more to go. So the next one on the list is up for grabs. If something is up for grabs, it means it's available and it's not being claimed. So it's available for you to either buy or to claim. Maybe it's a free prize. You could say there are lots of prizes up for grabs. Lots of prizes available and that haven't been claimed that you can claim up for grabs. Or you could say there are lots of products up for grabs. So products for you to buy, but they have not yet been bought. So they're available for you to buy. Um, so we hear up for grabs used a lot in advertising just like this sentence here. There are some amazing bargains up for grabs on my website. Yeah, that's something you might hear. All right, the next one is up for it. I'm up for it. Now, it used to be that this phrase, and I've seen it written on other websites actually, that up for, up for it is to mean that you are um, available and eager in a sexual way. But I don't use that in, in that way. I've heard it sometimes used in that way, but I say up for it and a lot of people around me say up for it just to mean that they're eager or they're keen. So I'd say, um, I'm going to the cinema. Are you up for it? And they go, yeah, I'm up for that. I'm up for that. Yeah, let's do that. Or I'd say, I'm going to the pub. I'm going to have a pint of beer. Do you fancy one? And they say, yeah, I'm up for a, I'm up for a beer. I'm up for it. Let's go. So don't think that the other websites that have said up for it means to be interested sexually. It's not true. In in Britain, we use it to mean I'm eager, I'm keen, okay? So the example sentence I've given here is, I'm planning to have a big celebration when I hit 100,000 subscribers. You are all welcome, you are welcome to join the party if you're up for it. Are you up for it? I hope so. Okay, so the next one is, up in arms, a completely different meaning. If some, someone is up in arms, it means they are angry. They're up in arms. Um, and the example sentence I've given here is, apparently Jade was up in arms because someone used her cup to give the guest teacher a cup of tea. <gasps> Uh-oh. In fact, I've worked in many schools and if you dare touch another teacher's cup, from in the staff room, if you go to make yourself a cup of tea and use someone else's cup, they get very upset. Everybody has to have their own cup. <laughs> so I, I made that mistake once and never again. So here we go, just so you can see it, to be up in arms, to mean angry. Apparently Jade was up in arms because someone used her cup to give the guest teacher a cup of tea. All right, so here we go. Here's another one you might see. Now I have to be careful, I can't say this word. This is a swear word. I'm sure you can work out what it is. And it's to be up sh creek. To be up sh creek. 
there is a really good reason why I can't say this guys and that's because YouTube have changed their rulings and all all videos have to be judged as being family friendly. Um, unfortunately, my videos keep getting flagged as being unfamily friendly, which is frustrating because everything I do is educational. So I'm trying my very, very, very best not to swear in any of my videos, even though it is educational. So I apologize for not saying, out, saying it out loud, but I'm sure you appreciate and understand what it is that I'm inferring. And this phrase means to be in a difficult or bad situation to be in a difficult or bad situation. We're running low on petrol. If we don't fill up at the next petrol station, we will be up Sh Creek before long. Okay, so you don't want to get yourself into a bad situation. You don't want to be up Sh Creek. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, yes, okay, so a couple of you are writing it now in the comments box so you know what it is. Yes, there we go. Yes, you know what it is I was trying to say. And sorry about that. I just have to make sure YouTube are happy so that I don't get any telling off, tellings off. <laughs> okay, so the next phrase, and we are getting so close to the end, three away from the end, here we are. So the next one is quite a fun one and it's to be up the duff. I mentioned this in my Instagram post a little while ago. Um, if you're not following me already on Instagram, guys, then make sure you are because I'm doing a lot on Instagram at the moment and you are missing out if you're not following me there because it's free. And there's lots of other great English teachers there as well. But if you are up the duff, it means you are pregnant. So if I say to you, hey guys, I'm up the duff, woohoo, then you know I'm announcing that I'm pregnant. I'm not up the duff, just in case you're wondering. Not yet anyway. Um, and so the example sentence I've given here is, oh, you will never guess what. Jane is up the duff. Oh, shock horror. <laughs> okay, so the next one, the next to last one is, and this is an offensive one. This is something you should never use with your colleagues at work. Um, and it's the phrase up yours. If you say up yours, you're basically insulting someone. And it's very similar to t saying to someone, get lost. If you don't know what get lost means, then take a look at the video I did on slang terms beginning with G, where I covered it there. But it's basically, if you're angry with someone, you might say, oh, get lost. So it's the same as saying, oh, up yours. All right, so these are just insulting terms for people that you're annoyed with and you don't want to, you don't want to interact with any more. You want them to go away and leave you alone. Okay. Um, and just so you can see that written in case you're not fully understanding what I'm saying, there it is. Okay. And we have one more to go. Can you possibly guess what it is? <laughs> um, just before I do say the very last one on the list, I do just want to say a huge thank you for joining me here today. And like I said earlier, if you're not already following me on Instagram, then please do. The link is in the description box just below, um, along with some other interesting links, helpful links that you might find um, useful in your English language. And the very last one here is the word user. So a user is either a person who is addicted to drugs, so it's someone who uses drugs on a regular basis, or a person who manipulates the people around them to get what they want without giving anything in return. Um, and the example sentence I gave here is... Okay, the example sentence I gave here is, I know you are hurting right now, but if I'm honest, I'm glad you split up with Gary. He was a user and you deserve better. Let me just show you that to you. I know you are hurting right now, but if I'm honest... I'm glad you split up with Gary. He was a user and you deserve better. Okay. So, um, I hope that makes sense. So basically a user is somebody who, um, if I come to you and I say, Hey, can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? And can you do this for me? And can you lend me 10 pounds? And can you babysit my children? And, um, can I eat some of the food out of your fridge? But whenever you ask me to do something, I do nothing. I don't help you, I don't respond to your text messages, I don't do anything for you. Whenever you ask for something, I say no. 
I'm busy. No, I can't. And so that kind of person is a user. It's not very nice. It's all about the give and the take. Okay, so amazing. Guys, if you found this helpful, then please help me out by clicking that share button. It takes one moment of your time and it makes a huge difference to everything I'm doing. The more you can help me, the more I can help you. Unfortunately, this week and for many weeks to come, I'm not going to be able to do many live lessons. I'd love to, but I can't because my growth has slowed down. My income has slowed down. YouTube has been demonetizing so many of my videos saying it's not family friendly, it's not family friendly. So the small amount that I was earning from YouTube is now plummeting. So I've had to go and do other work and that takes me away from you. But you can help me by improving my watch time, sharing, showing other people, getting other people involved and that will help to bring me back to you. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me go and check out that other lesson that I released this morning, the best ways to learn a language. Any of them you can share, amazing. Any of them that you can offer translations on, the link's down below. That would be super, super, super helpful. And if you want to become a patron and do a little bit more and get some more in return, like the notes that I've used today, then come over to the Patreon page and see what is on offer for rewards. All right, guys, lots of love. I'm going to stay on the chat room for about five minutes to answer any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Lots of love from London.